Good morning, everyone. Today is July the 10th, 2024. This is your thought for today. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, as always, we thank you for bringing us together as a family. Bless us now as we look to your word for help as we face a new day. For us in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. I'd like to say good morning once again to everybody. It's so good to be back with you all today. It is hump day, so we are almost to the conclusion of another week. And I just want to give God praise for being on here with you all again today. Before I share with you the thought for today, I just want to Go back to the reminder scripture that I shared with you all on Monday. I think it is very fitting because it was very encouraging. So for those of you who weren't able to be with us on Monday, I'm going to read that again for you guys. Then I'm going to share the title for our thought for today. And then we're going to get right into it. Psalm 146, 1 through 10 says this, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Let me just stop right there and say, God loves when you sing to him. Because when you sing to him, he'll sing right back to you. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to this, or his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners. Thank you, Lord. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations, praise ye the Lord. Once again, I want to read verses one and two for you. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul, while I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. You all have heard the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones. But words will never hurt me. I'm here to tell you that that's a flat out lie. Because your words do hurt. We have a tendency as individuals to uh, 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 put things together that brings sadness to God's face. And this morning, I want us to talk about the subject, watch your mouth. Our thought for today is watch your mouth. These are some of the things that we have the audacity to say to 
one another. These are just some of the things that we have said one time or another, or we probably still say it. You're ugly. You're an idiot. You're stupid. Are you slow? Use your brain. Shut up. Uh, but there is one saying that became famous. You know the saying. We used to watch the show. We used to laugh. You big dummy. Red Fox made that famous when he would call Lamont or anybody else that got in his way. You big dummy. Words have such power. And I want us to really take today a cold, hard look at how we speak to individuals at our job, how we speak to individuals in our home, how we speak to individuals, period, because God holds us to a high standard when it comes to the words that come out of our mouth. Let me go to the text. I'm just going to share three texts with you, and then I'm going to pray, and I'm going to challenge you. That's all I'm going to do. There are a lot of verses in the Bible that deal with the mouth and speaking, but these three are the ones that I want to highlight today, especially the one found in Matthew 12. That's what we're going to be focused on. But before we go there, let's go ahead and see what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29, Paul says this, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So what I, I, I gather from our dear brother Paul is he's saying corrupt communication. What makes something corrupt? We need to think about it. Uh, 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 is what you say to that person going to uh, encourage them, give them the unction to continue to press forward as they matric matriculate in this life? Or is it going to cause them to do bodily harm to themselves by either cutting themselves or, 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 or cutting their hair off or, or causing them to hurt other people? Because uh, sometimes hurt people end up hurting people as well. Hurt people hurt people. Yes, for some. Uh, uh, I remember growing up in Kansas City and going to school and, 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 and there would be individuals in school that would just, oh man, they would give me such a hard time. They, they, they would talk about me so, so bad, uh, uh, they would say how ugly I was and, and, and how black I was and how I was left in the oven too long. I mean, they said some very cruel things. But I had people. I had a circle that was around me because I would share what was going on. And they would reiterate to me, Robbie, you're, you're not ugly. Your skin is beautiful. You, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That, that's why I, I want uh, the individual who, who may be looking at this right now 
to understand the lips that you have, the, the ears that you have, the, the nose that you have, the head that you have, the, the bodily features that you have. You are special. God, God doesn't make mistakes. And so you don't have to look like that person that you see on that magazine who's not really that person for real. Because once all the makeup and all that other stuff is off, you would be surprised how these individuals look. So embrace and be thankful for the way that God made you. I just want you to understand that. You are beautiful. And God doesn't make mistakes. But let's go back to the text. Because I want us to highlight the word in this text. Edifying. What does it mean to edify? I looked up the word edify and this is what it says edify means hold on for a second guys i just had it up and then oh there we go it's uplifting uplifting now now no, no. it says instructive or beneficial especially morally or spiritually uplifting so the words that come out of our mouths should be so strong that the person who hears them are encouraged once they leave from our presence. They can be able to tackle whatever it is that life is going to throw at them because they have been encouraged by the words that come out of our mouth. Now, as you all know, I have three children, two girls and a boy. I need to be very careful with what I say. There is a certain way that I need to speak to each and every one of them. I can't speak to each and every one of them in the way that I think I need to speak to them. I need to speak to them in a way that empowers them, that encourages them. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend as if I've always said the right stuff and how it's come out because it has not. Even though your intention may be good in what you say, the delivery has to be good, wholesome, and uplifting. That's what I love about Jesus. He, he, his words were mingled with love. He, he said hard things, but they were mingled with some, so much love and concern for the receiver of what he was saying that he was very mindful of how he delivered what he said. Because when we say uplifting things, that is providing grace unto the hearer. They can deal with whatever comes their way. So sometimes when people say things to my children that are not nice, uh, uh, we remind them that although this person uh, says this or says that, it doesn't mean that you have to do the same thing. Someone has to be the difference maker in the situation. Proverbs 18, 21 says this, death and life are in the power of the tongue. We bless with our mouth. We curse with our mouth. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Simple warning, be careful what you say to others because... It will come back on you eventually. I want to drop this quote in that, that, that th this is my words right here. Uh, I want you to, to, to think about this as you go throughout this day. Don't let the, uh, 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 the ignorance of someone else calls you to, to stoop down to their level. So if they're calling you names, don't stoop down to their level and start calling them names because uh, what is the benefit of that? I, I'll say to you, there is no benefit. If someone wants to call you out of your name, 
you don't have to address that situation. Most disagreements can be handled by walking away, going in your closet, or going in your cubicle, or wherever you have a space where you can be alone with God and pray. And ask him for wisdom and understanding. Well, why am I saying that? Because Jesus had to deal with people saying all kinds of stuff all the time. And what was his custom? He would go off and he would pray. He would pray in the morning before he started his day. So when he went throughout the day, he would have uh, uh, everything. He had everything that he needed to provide for everyone, even the ones who were saying crazy stuff. They were baffled because he... He, 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 he wouldn't accept the bait. What I'm saying to you all who are viewing right now, stop uh, uh, taking the bait that people are throwing out at you. Matthew 12, 34 to 37 is our scripture reference that I want us to, to really look at this morning. And says, O generation of vipers, this is Jesus speaking. Now read the whole chapter, by the way. Very powerful chapter. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. There it is right there. What is in your heart? What's in your heart is going to come out. He's saying right here, if you're evil... How can you speak good things? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. This is what Jesus is saying. This is, this is truth right here. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Have you ever just met somebody who, who always, it's always something bad, 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 bad that's coming out? And you don't understand it. It's like you've never seen any good. And, and what's the problem? Why is this heart so hardened? I know life can be a struggle sometimes. I know life can be tough sometimes. But when a person's heart is hardened, that is someone that has decided that they don't want any good thing coming in. They have basically given themselves over to their flesh and you know the flesh and the spirit battle every single day that's a constant battle that we deal with every single day choosing what side we're going to be on the side of the flesh or the side of the spirit there's no middle ground ladies and gentlemen either we're going to walk in the flesh or we're going to walk in the spirit that's it Listen to what Jesus says in verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men speak shall speak, they shall give an account thereon, thereof in the day of judgment. Oh, wow. So every single word that comes out of Robert Lee White's mouth, the third, I'm going to have to be or I'm going to be held accountable for it. You see the importance of knowing how to speak? You see the importance of us watching our mouth? For thy words thou shalt be, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Do you want to be justified by your words or do you want to be condemned? I want to be justified out about you. So today. This is what I want you guys to do. I want you to edify your brothers. I want you to encourage your brothers and sisters. I want you to be the individual that God created you to be. And guess what? If you slip and fall, get up. God is not going to strike you down if you fall. As a matter of fact, God is in the business of helping us do things that we don't even have the power to do. John 15, 5 says this, I am the vine. 
Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. We need him constantly. So my challenge to you is to speak words of encouragement to everyone you encounter today. I have a bonus scripture for you. It's coming from 1 Peter 3, verse 8. It says, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. I know that you all are going to have a great day, edifying, encouraging, and empowering your brothers and sisters today. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for my family, for watching over them and for protecting them. You know what they're dealing with right now. Give to them everything that they need. And Holy Spirit, help them to be your representative today as they uplift their brothers, empower their brothers, encourage their brothers, pray for their brothers and sisters. Keep us safe until we see each other next time for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all and I'll see you next time.